Hello everybody, welcome back to another game of Rory Story Cube with our lovely little cubes right here. Like the Trojan horse and all that sort of thing. As I said yesterday with the Skyrim video, I now have a desk like to light up the place. I hope that it's not going to be too bright for you. Let me just check that for a second. I was just wondering if maybe the uh, lamp would uh, shine on the uh, cubes too much and make it reflect, and it might do as a well. rule. Hopefully, if I put them here in a line, it'll be okay for you to look at. So we're gonna get started. I'm gonna go grab a whole bunch of dice somewhere away from the microphone because it is pretty noisy. This process. Let me just grab nine of them. Like, oh, that's a difficult grab there. Hang on. Let's turn this turn into a different type of video entirely. Let's see. These are. Four of them. Skull already, that's nice. And I need five more. Oh, these two came up. And that leaves three. That's these three right here. There we go. Those are the ones we're gonna roll with today. Alright, now the first story is coming up. There, let's roll four and then five. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, there we go, we have a dice, naturally. A forbidden sign, by looks of things. Two people that look like they may be friends or relatives. And here is a basket which they used to transport children in a long time ago. I'm guessing maybe they still do now. But I used to have like a, a doll that used to have a basket like that. Don't recall seeing any kids in them recently. Oopsie. And this is a wheelchair. And this is an outline of someone. This is an airplane. Whoops, there, like that. And this is someone on a parachute, conveniently. And here is a letter. Oh, very nice. All right, so make sure to pause the video here and then make up your own story and post that below in the comments. I'll read it. And if it's really nice or if I really like it or really feel like it, I might do a little dramatic reading of it in the next video. Either way, uh, let's see what we can do with these dice. Um, why don't we start like over here the wheelchair not exactly the most uh, obvious dice to start with but I'm gonna start with it today we have a wheelchair here and it belongs to an old man named Fred and Fred uh, once upon a time had a friend and there he is there's Fred and his friend and they were great adventurers and they would go all over the place to uh, do adventuring and that sort of thing, even going into areas that were restricted because that was cool back in the day when you were young and all that sort of thing. And they took a lot of risks. There you go, they gambled quite a bit with their lives and all that sort of thing. And one day, uh, his friend went on a plane and he jumped out with a parachute and he was never seen or heard from again until a letter arrived for Frank. Uh, Frank or Fred, whatever his name was, I've forgotten what I called him. One of those two. He opens the letter and finds that it's actually from his long lost friend. And he's like, what the hell happened there? I mean, he died. He was missing, uh, at least the missing in action. Gonna, that's an outline really of Shark on the Road, but now it's missing in action because he's not there. But his outline is, as someone would be in your thoughts, like, oh no, where has he been? Uh, anyway, so he thought that he was dead a long time ago, but it turns out that when he jumped out of the airplane, oops, there goes I used to mark the area of the edge of the screen. Uh, he didn't actually die or drown or anything, he just got lost in the area that he uh, landed in, a very vast jungle. And he met some new people. He made new friends who did live in an area that was actually restricted, so nobody actually came to see them because most people do follow the rules and they saw the sign and turned away. It was a tribe way out back in somewhere in the jungle and he even married one of the women, had the kids with them. So he is now a father. Uh, the grandfather by the time the, uh, the uh, letter arrived, of course, but by the time that he managed to get to a post office to send anything, it was many, many years long the uh, time, and he never actually got to write and tell his friend on time, many years ago, that he was actually okay. But he had been thinking about them, about their friendship, and he would like to have met them once more if it weren't so difficult to get airfare out of here, because it's really... Uh, they don't exactly have an airstrip, but anyway, he bade him well and said that everything was fine, you needn't worry, and whatever he still had left over there in the civilized world was now uh, belonging to Fred, who uh, later put it in his will and gave it to his kids when he died, like five years later, 
And he died happy because he knew that his friend was alive out there, or at least was at the point of sending a letter and everything was okay after all. Alright, so that was a sad but nice, I guess, ending story. It was not quite sad. It was one of those motivational things where things turn out to be okay even when it doesn't look like it's gonna be okay. That's one of the type of stories this is. That's the type of story it was. Alright, hope you like that. It, I like it, but I think I could have told it better. Maybe if I had some different dice for different story elements. Maybe, I don't know. Doesn't really matter. I'm gonna set these guys aside. Perhaps the next dice will give us more opportunities for even better stories. Oops, I'm gonna put these out down here and grab nine new ones, which are a bit further away once again. Still haven't gone around to making the better bag. We'll have to do so at some point. So let's see, here is how many? I think five. That's right, five dice. And Zeus is back. And so is this weird alien device. Let's see, and how many do I have now? This is four of them. That's good, that's all we need. We need no more than this. I haven't seen this one yet. Interesting to see what that will bring up. Alright, first four. Yep, there we go. This looks like a skull and bones. And this is a crown. And this is a throne. Well, convenient that these two show up at the same time. This is an axe. Let's axe the throne a question. These are the next five coming up. There. This is a cracked egg. And a light bulb. And a crown, or actually a uh, circle, I guess, because we have a crown already. And of course, here's not Olympus. Nice. I do not have a god yet, but we'll think of something. And this looks like Jupiter or Saturn. I think Saturn won the rings. Pretty sure Saturn won the one. There we go. We'll line it up a little bit. There they are. Now make sure to pause your video so you can look at these pictures and come up with a story of your own. And make sure to post that in the comments below. Meanwhile, let's see now. Uh, not many people know that there are actually two Mount Olympi. One of them, of course, is in Greece, on Earth, and the other one, if I could just pull everything out, is on Saturn. And things are Saturn are quite the same as they are in the, the uh, normal human realm on Earth. Of course, there was the Mount Olympus of Saturn. It's set there all by itself because there aren't that many mounts. I actually don't even know how many mounts there are in the Saturn. Does Saturn even have mountains? Can anybody tell? Isn't Saturn one with the weather that you can't really see the surface and all that sort of thing? Could be. Anyway, but it's there. I see it's right here. It's on Saturn, and there was a king there who uh, ruled justly. Actually, he was a god, of course, not really a king, but he had a crown, and since there were no other uh, gods around, he uh, was the only one, and he was kind of sad about that. So he sat on his throne all day, and he thought, like, uh, what's going to happen when I die over here? I mean, I'm a god, I'm probably going to be here for many millennia to come still, but uh, I would like a successor at some point, because someday, even if I, I'm not going to die of old age, I might trip, I might break my neck, and then there'll be nobody to rule Saturn. What the heck? So he uh, got an idea, actually. He was looking through his telescope one night, and he saw Earth, and he was like, hey, you know what, the, uh, the sister of Mount Olympus is over there, and maybe they have some gods. So I'll see if I can get one to come over here, and then we can start a new little Mount Olympus... Uh, God, uh, Pantheon rather, that's the word I was looking for, right here in Saturn. Lovely Saturn with its rings. So he flew over there, because he's a god and he does need to breathe, and he arrived on Earth at the regular Mount Olympus, the one that we know. We call it regular, of course, but it's like saying that the English have an accent when you're in the United States, which of course the English think about people in America. Never mind. Anyway, he was in Greece on Mount Olympus over there, and he went to look around, and he found a few people there. They weren't quite gods, they were demigods, because over the years um, the gods had had so many children with regular mortals, the, uh, the godhood had kind of weakened the lineage, but he did find someone who looked promising. Uh, it was a prince of some sort. And he was the uh, patron saint of eggs. Uh, not exactly the best patron saint he is, but it's like egg, new life. He, uh, he thought, you know what, that might be a good idea. I think I'll choose him. So he, uh, he said, hey, would you like a new opportunity? And the other one was like, okay, that sounds cool. What are we going to do? Well, he says, we're going to go back to Saturn because I have my own Mount Olympus right there. And the uh, Prince of Eggs said, um, okay, what are we going to do there? Well, says he, we're going to rule. Because that's what we're going to do, and that's what we do. And so, oh, I grabbed the one one right here. Let me switch this for a second. Wee! There we go. Mount Olympus on Saturn, that's what it was. That's the throne. I have a throne there. Why not put that over there? 
We're going to rule Saturn. There's lots of plebs there that need ruling. I think you're the best candidate for a job. Okay, says Prince Egg. I'll come with you and we'll take a look at your little kingdom there on Saturn. So they left for Saturn and they arrived eventually over there. Of course, the mountain grabbed those two at the same time. And they looked around and actually uh, Prince Egg liked what he saw. And so for a few years he just had like an internship or an apprenticeship, whatever you like to call it, with our uh, king god over here from Saturn, whose name I haven't mentioned yet, but I don't have one, so that's okay. And after a while he was like, okay, I think I've learned enough. So one night he snuck into the bedroom, this guy, and literally axed him for the throne. And that was it. He got it because the other guy was sleeping and couldn't really answer the question. So he took it anyway. He took silence as agreement. And then he became the new king of Saturn's Mount Olympus. There, Saturn. Saturn's Mount Olympus, like that. There we go. That's how it's supposed to be. And that is the end of the story. And also, of course, many millennia later, he had the exact same problem of succession. But he'll figure it out himself next time. Perhaps we'll see him in another story. For now, though, he is done. Okay, so that was story number two. We're gonna set these guys aside as well, so we don't draw them a second time. Put them over here, so you can't see them. No, 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 no. There we go. A little bit of space over there. And all to myself. Now I'm gonna grab the next nine dice. I'm hoping that there's some new sets that come out. I mean, I have quite a few sets already, but I like getting the new dice in. It does make things more difficult occasionally, but sometimes you get kind of bored, even though you have a whole bunch of dice already available. Oops, there's just three of them. I thought I had five, but we are nearly there. There, that's that. Let's see now. Five. A portcullis, is that what it's called? It's a gate in any case. Guy in a tube. There's someone pointing accusingly. Uh, dinosaur bones. Or a skeleton. Skeletal dinosaur of some sort. Magnets. Goes over here. There you go. Next four. A syringe. Yeah, that's a syringe. A chess piece. And a helicopter from the Red Cross. And DNA. Okie dokie. Well, pause the video here to come up with your own story. I think I have an idea. I'm not sure who we're gonna get started with, but it might be fun. Actually. I'm gonna go pull everything back here without actually flipping the dice, otherwise I have to do it all over again. Let's say one day there was a scientist. And scientists like to invent stuff, they like to research things, that's one of the things they do. And this scientist in particular uh, wanted to, uh, well, he wanted to make a new discovery. And he had a secret lab back somewhere where people didn't know it was except for his assistant, of course. He needed a special device to open a door so you couldn't just walk in there. Um, and he was so convinced when he found a bunch of dinosaur bones that he could uh, use the DNA to improve other people. Then he went and injected himself with the DNA. And then, just for safekeeping, he had himself uh, cryogenically frozen for many years because he figured that at a low temperature, I'm just talking uh, like I didn't know anything scientific, of course, but I'm saying that this scientist thought at a low temperature the DNA wouldn't die off and it might actually have a chance to uh, mix with his own DNA. And uh, while well, his uh, assistants played uh, chess for many years, because he had to stay in there for at least five years in order to uh, for the project to be somewhat successful. That was their estimate. And uh, the uh, the DNA went to work on his body. And of course they couldn't see that because the tube was cryogenically frozen. But something happened before the fifth year term uh, could show up. Uh, somebody came along with a gigantic magnet one day for a different experiment that was being taken place like in the door, the uh, place next to him. But they had to pass it because there was only one hallway. You know, sometimes these places are not uh, designed very well for safety and security reasons. And the tube he was in broke. And he came out, he was actually part dinosaur. And he was not very happy with that, so he accused his assistants of being fools. He's like, you, you did it. And then he started chasing everybody and trying to inject them with DNA because he had gone insane. And so the police had to send out a helicopter because he had gotten outside. He got out of this uh, secure prison and they had to chase him down. And eventually they managed to uh, shoot him with an antidote that uh, both uh, rendered him unconscious 
I started to uh, remove the DNA from his uh, bones and all that sort of thing because they have that somewhere in a secret lab somewhere else that was a, of a competitor's company, no idea. Anyway, so eventually he uh, fell down. He did, he fell down. There he goes. Uh, I accused this guy and they put him back into his tube because it wasn't the same tube because now he just needed to be cryogenically frozen to um, basically arrest and recuperate from his uh, recent DNA shock which he had gotten from the police and after a while he came back out of his tube and he was well rested it was like 10 years after his initial experiment everybody else had gotten 10 years old already he was still the same guy and so he used his DNA knowledge to never do that again first of all but it was certainly very useful and he wrote all of that down in a very uh, successful report and wrote a book and got a book deal and he got a contract to go and to, to give TED talks all around the world and after that he just spent the rest of his years playing chess with a computer so that was that that was the third and last story of today hope your stories have been uh, just as much fun to create i would like to read them below thanks for watching in any case i'll see you next time and bye bye for now